Hi all. In this video, let's explore some of the CSS performance improvement optimization points. So firstly, when an HTML page is loaded, it means uh, we are not directly giving an uh, unstyled HTML page to the user. That would be a bad experience. We'll be giving the HTML page and we'll apply all the CSS styles to that and we'll show that to the user. So for that, this reason, CSS is render blocking. In sense, browser will paint the page once it downloaded all the CSS and it will build the CSS DOM structure. And when the render tree is ready, then only we are going to give this page to the user. So uh, this, this is happens when we load the CSS. To optimize the CSS, we have many things to do. At the high level, we need to remove the unnecessary CSS. We need to minify and compress the CSS. We can catch the CSS and split the CSS. So these are the high level points to be done. But at the low level, uh, I, I will be discussing these points. So the first point is optimizing for render blocking. So render blocking in sense, just now we have discussed that the styles will block the rendering. We will be showing the entire page with the styled to, uh, to the users so that he will be getting a better experience. But when we use the style sheets in the header tag, this would be like render blocking. It means it will not render anything until this CSS is downloaded and passed and applied to the elements. At, at, that, uh, at that point of time, the render would be blocked to the user. So we, are, we need to optimize this. How we are going to optimize this? So only use the style sheets which are really needed at that point. So now if you load all these three style sheets, these three style sheets will take more time and it will block the rendering. So here, I don't want this style sheet. So I, I, it needs to be a need, it need at the later point of time. For that, mention this media type things. So here, if you mention the media like this, so there, the now the this media tag will tell to the browser. It means um, browser can understand that this should be loaded only when there is a specific scenario. Like uh, here we are using some responsive things. So the browser can understand, I need to load this style sheet at the specific scenario. So it will, for these two style sheets, it will not block the rendering. Even though it will download the CSS, but it will not block the rendering. In this way, we need to optimize the render blocking. So in this case, instead of all these three render blockings, we made only for one. Only this would be the important thing to be loaded at the initial phrase. So this would be the render blocking part. So remaining two, we are making uh, it in sense we are giving a least priority so that browser can understand with these medias. It can uh, download and parse at the specific scenarios. So it takes some time. So it will not stop the render blocking. So try to use the CSS uh, style sheets uh, based upon this media condition. If really it is needed, then specify this condition so that browser can um, take a better decision and it will be loaded accordingly. So this is about optimizing the render blocking. In this way, we need to optimize the rendering. So coming to the second point. Second point is all about will change. So will change is a property. You're going to mention what this element is going to change. So whether it is transform or op opacity. So if you mention this property, it means we are telling to the browser to enable the optimization of this element before the changes was actually occur. In, in sense, we are asking the browser to do all the optimization heavily computed task upfront for this element because it needs to do some animation part of things. So do them upfront before this element comes into the picture. That's the uh, will change property will do. This will increase the performance because browser will do what all the things need to do before the change occurs. It will do upfront. Those calculations and would be done upfront. So whenever the item comes, it will directly perform this action on this element. So in this way, we can improve the performance with will change property. This property should not be overused because it would have a negative impact if you overuse. And also one of the big mistake of using this uh, will change property is we should not use this will change property to the hover because will change means the property is a future tense. 
if anything comes in the future we are making the browser to get ready for the future things but hover is the thing it is doing the animation at that point so the animation is doing at, uh, right now in that point so this is not uh, correct to use the will change property for the hover so we need to keep this in mind uh, in this in mind so coming uh, to the next point is animation should be done on the gpu so the third point would be like uh, animating on the gpu in sense usually will be animations would be done on the browser rendering engine itself straight away those will be done on the browser rendering engine it in sense it, it is working on the main thread only all the graphics animations would be worked on the main thread we should route from the main thread to the gpu gpu in sense graphics processing unit we need to route these animations part to the gpu in that way we can improve the performance of the css of the application as well so how we are going to do that so the animations which all the animations we have we need to mention them in this way like uh, 3d animations the all animations which are needed like this 3d animations so then this would be translated to the gpu so instead of using translate 3d if you use another any properties to translate in the same way that won't go to the gpu so that's the reason we all the css3 transactions canvas drawing webg gl all these things we need to make sure we use translate 3d so these are some keywords that we route the uh, from a main thread to the gpu so also if you are not using these uh, 3d transactions we need to use this translate z like this so these are some of the uh, properties where we are instructing the browser to route this calculation and animation things to the gpu so try to understand this what all the animations we are using in our, uh, our application and how we need to route them to the gpu so that's the main thing we need to understand to improve the uh, optimization so this is one of the use case for that so coming to the last point is about font display so i uh, will show you one thing so usually what happens so we'll we'll be downloading the fonts from the any of the url like cdn so when the browser doesn't get any of the font family which we are trying to download from any of the cdns so till that point the text would be like this empty we'll show an empty page like this when it gets the fonts fonts are downloaded and when the browser applies that fonts to the elements then we will be getting the text like this so at the initial load for these many milliseconds user could should, could be able to see this blank page instead of any of the text so this is like uh, we are not uh, using the css uh, in an optimal way so for that uh, we have an alternative that is a font display so this is a new new option we have if you use this font display what happens so at the initial stage itself we are mentioning some properties and it means some fallback fonts would be used so that the user can get the text readable text in the first phrase itself like that so let me show you that phrase see at the initial stage itself user would be getting the fonts the default fonts fallback fonts once the browser could able to download the required font family then this font default fallback font would be swapped to the real font so this would be happen so let me show you that so this font display is a property which we are discussing this uh, descriptor font should be used for the font face at the rate font face only so when you are using this at the rate font face only we can use this font display so this has some properties like block swap and fallback so these are the three main uh, properties for this font display so uh, font display block is by default we'll be using uh, browsers all browsers would be using this font uh, default block font display block would be the default all the browsers would be using we should use this block only if you think that this font is must and should necessary for the page then only use this block because it will block the page unless this font is loaded so there are a couple of things like swap it, it will if you give display swap it will wait for some time like 3 seconds to the font which to be loaded if it is not available it would be initially the swap directly to applies to the fallback uh, font 
and after three seconds, if the font was downloaded, it would swap the default font to this font. So whereas the fallback also does the same thing, it will directly up. It will wait for three seconds for the block preded and the swap preded. After that, it will apply the default fallback font. If once this font is failure, then the default fallback font would be available as well. So hope you under understand this font display. So let me uh, wrap it up. So we need to use a font display to make the users better uh, experience with the CSS loading the fonts by default. So initially, uh, instead of giving the empty page, it's good to give some text to the users to read for some time. And whenever the font was loaded, you can swap to the original font. If the font is failed to load, the CDN fonts are failed to load, you have any fallback. It's like we are providing the fallback font so that users won't be delayed to the uh, seeing the fonts. So that's the main advantage of using this font display. The block swap and the fallback are the three main properties. By default, the block would be the property. Only use this property if you really think that these uh, fonts are necessary uh, at that page. And the swap means and it gives a zero block predate. It will not even wait for one second also. It will directly apply the fallback font. And once the, this font is mm, available, then it will swap. If you give the uh, font display swap, this is going to happen. Whereas coming to the font display, same happens, but it gives some time to the block preded and swap preded. Thereafter, it will apply this font, fallback font. So hope you understand these uh, uh, optimization points, CSS optimization points. Uh, optimizing for rendering blocking. This is the main thing we need to remember and we need to follow because it avoids uh, it. Uh, by this, we can uh, increase, uh, we can decrease the uh, blocking, blocking, render blocking. It helps us a lot. So, this is what I'm uh, using right now. I've not yet tried this animating GPU and font display yet. So, I'm uh, trying this field change property now. So, hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.